Hey everyone, buckle up. We're about to take a deep dive into the origins of the Indo-European languages. Oh yeah. Think English, Spanish, Hindi, you know, the whole gang's here. Right. And get this, you've provided us with some cutting edge research that's seriously shaking things up. Mm -hmm. The genetic origin of the Indo-Europeans. That's our text for today. Oh, this paper is a game changer, no doubt. Right. We're talking hundreds of ancient DNA samples pushing back thousands of years and revealing a story way more intricate than we ever imagined. Right. It's like those history books need a serious rewrite. Yeah. I mean, we've all heard about the Yamnaya people, those horse riding nomads who supposedly spread Indo-European languages across Europe and Asia. Right. But this research is saying, hold your horses. There's a whole <laughs> prequel we didn't even know about. Exactly. Enter the Caucasus Lower Volga people, the CLB for short. All right. These folks were living around the North Caucasus Mountains in the Lower Volga River long before the Yamnaya arrived on the scene. Mm -hmm. And they weren't just sitting around either. Right. We're talking mixing, mingling, and potentially speaking a language that would blow your mind. Okay, you've got me hooked. Yeah. Lay it on me. <laughs> what were these CLV folks speaking? Yeah. Was it like... Proto, Proto-Indo-European. Here's where it gets really juicy. Right. Their research suggests the CLV language wasn't just ancestral to Indo-European languages, but oh. also to another family known as Anatolian languages. Whoa, hold up. Anatolian, as in the Hittites, those guys <laughs> were speaking something related to the ancestor of English. That's wild. It challenges the old narrative, doesn't it? For a long time, linguists debated whether Anatolian languages like Hittite were even remotely related to Indo-European languages. Right. Now, this DNA research suggests they were once branches on the same tree way back with the CLV people. Mind blown. So how did the researchers even begin to piece this together? Yeah. We're talking about languages that existed thousands of years ago. They analyzed DNA to map out genetic clines. Think of it like a gradient. Okay. Instead of hard borders, imagine colors gradually blending into each other across a map. Mm -hmm. These clines represent groups with subtly different ancestries spread across the landscape. So more like zones of interaction than strict boundaries. Precisely. Okay. The researchers identified three key clines in this region. The CLV cline, the Volga cline further north, and the Dnipro cline to the west. And here's the ticker. They found evidence of people moving between these clines, sometimes over incredible distances. Wait, what? How far are we talking? You won't believe this. They found a genetic link spanning from the Caucasus Mountains all the way to modern day Turkey. Wow. Suggesting a shared ancestry between the CLV people and wait for it. The Hittites. Get out. That's right. Yeah. The Hittite Empire, one of the most powerful civilizations of the ancient world, might have roots in these mysterious Caucasus dwellers. No way. A connection stretching over that much time and distance. Yeah. Talk about a family reunion. But how does that kind of long-range mingling even happen? Was it like a migration or something? That's the million-dollar question. It wasn't just one mass movement. We're talking generations of interaction people meeting, trading, perhaps even marrying across these clines. And where people go, languages often follow. Imagine the linguistic melting pot. So it wasn't just a simple case of one language replacing another. Right. There was this whole hidden history of mixing and blending going on. Mm -hmm. This is completely changing how I picture the ancient world. And it gets even more interesting. Okay. Remember those Yamnaya folks we thought were calling the shots? Yeah. Well, they might have just inherited their language already evolved and diversified from their ancestors, the same ancestors they shared with those Anatolian-speaking groups. We're talking about chains of transmission stretching back through time, each link representing a group of people and their language. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that the Yamnaya, the ones we always thought were the originators, right. might have just inherited this language from an even earlier group? It really. That it, changes everything. Yeah, it challenges. So what sparked this whole chain reaction? What set the Yamnaya in motion? Well, the researchers discovered something else buried in the DNA, a population boom. Okay. And not just any boom, we're talking a sudden and dramatic surge in population amongst the ancestors of the Omnia. A baby boom. Yeah. What's the big deal about that? It suggests something big was brewing. Okay. And here's where it gets really fascinating. This boom coincides with the rise of a new culture in the archaeological record, the Seredni stick culture. Okay, so we've got the CLV folks potentially speaking the ancestor of both Indo-European and Anatolian languages. Right. They're mixing it up along those clines. And then, bam, a population explosion, right as this new culture, the Seredni Sti, pops up. It's like the setup for an epic movie. You've got it. 
And the researchers think this population surge combined with innovations emerging from the Serednisti culture might have been the driving force behind the Yamnaya expansions that we've always associated with the spread of Indo-European languages. So it's like the CLV people set the stage and then the Yamnaya inheriting this blend of cultures and perhaps languages took center stage and really got the word out literally. Yeah. But if the Yamnaya were so successful, what happened to the CLV people? Did they just disappear? Well, remember that Y chromosome lineage, RV1736, uh, the one so common among the CLV men? Right. Once the Yamnaya show up, that lineage practically vanishes from the steppe. Wow. It suggests the CLV people were almost completely absorbed by the newcomers. Wow. Talk about being overshadowed. Okay, so the Yamnaya spread far and wide, taking their language or languages with them. Right. But this research paper also took a close look at those famous Yamnaya burial mounds, those Kurgans, right? Ha. Uh -huh. I remember learning in school about how they were like family tombs, mm -hmm. but this paper is saying not so fast. Yeah. What's the story there? So what's the real deal with these Kurgans? Spill the tea. Get this. The researchers used a technique called identity by descent analysis. Okay. IBD for short. Okay. To see how closely related those buried together in the Kurgans actually were. Yeah. And guess what? Don't keep me in suspense. Were they all one big happy family or what? Not even close. Turns out most <laughs> weren't immediate family at all. Really? Sure, they shared some distant ancestors, but we're talking like distant cousins at best. This throws a real wrench in the whole family tomb idea. Wow, so much for that theory. I guess those history books need even more rewriting than we thought. But seriously, if it wasn't just family in those Kurgans, what does it tell us about Yemnaya society? It suggests a social structure that went beyond blood ties. Perhaps these Kurgans represented clans, communities, or social groups we haven't even considered yet. It's a tantalizing glimpse into a world we're only just beginning to understand. Okay, now I'm really starting to see how this research adds so much more depth to what we thought we knew. But before we get too caught up in those Kurgans, let's go back to the language for a second. You mentioned earlier that this research changes our understanding of the Indo-European family tree. How so? Right. This research suggests the split between Anatolian and Indo-European languages happened earlier than previously thought, somewhere between 4400 and 4000 BCE, according to their analysis. Wow, that's pushing it back centuries. What does that mean for our understanding of how these languages are related? It really throws a wrench into things. Linguists have been reconstructing these ancient languages based on the assumption of a later split. This earlier date changes the whole timeline of how these languages evolved and diverged. It's like we've been working with this slightly blurry map, and now this DNA evidence is giving us a much sharper image. So we're not just talking about tweaking a few dates here and there, this is fundamentally changing how we understand the evolution of these languages. Exactly. It highlights how genetics can provide a powerful new lens through which to view the past, challenging old assumptions and revealing connections we never could have imagined. And speaking of connections... You're going to bring us back to those long-distance relationships, aren't you? Tell me more. Those IBD segments, the ones used to debunk the family tomb idea, also helped researchers trace connections between those genetic lines, sometimes over mind-blowing distances. Okay, I'm hooked. Give me an example. How far are we talking? Remember that connection to the Hittites in Anatolia? Yeah. Well, the researchers found evidence of shared DNA segments between individuals living hundreds of miles apart, stretching all the way from the Caucasus to modern-day Turkey. It paints a picture of incredible mobility and interaction across these vast distances. Hold on. So you're saying people weren't just interacting with their immediate neighbors. They were forming connections and presumably sharing languages and cultures across huge stretches of land. It's like discovering an ancient superhighway of cultural exchange. Precisely. This wasn't just a static picture of isolated groups. We're talking about a dynamic world with constant movement, interaction, and exchange, all of which shaped the languages and cultures we see today. It's like piecing together a giant jigsaw puzzle with each new discovery revealing a little bit more of the bigger picture. It's amazing to think that these tiny snippets of DNA can unlock so much about the past. But as you said earlier, genetics can't tell the whole story, can it? We need archaeology and linguistics to fill in the gaps and really bring this ancient world to life. Absolutely. It's like having different pieces of a puzzle. Genetics provides the framework, the skeletal structure, while archaeology and linguistics flesh out the details, adding color and texture to our understanding. Okay, I love that analogy. So what kind of details can archaeology provide? What do those Kurgans tell us beyond just who is buried in them? For starters, they often contained elaborate grave goods, weapons, pottery, sometimes even sacrificed animals. These artifacts offer a glimpse into Yamnaya beliefs, rituals, and their relationship with the afterlife. 
It's like peeking into a time capsule, revealing the material culture of a long-vanished society. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. We're talking chariots, bronze tools, intricate pottery, all buried with the dead. It makes you wonder what those objects meant to them, what stories they could tell. It really fires up the imagination, doesn't it? And then there's linguistics. By analyzing the relationships between words, the structures of grammar, and the subtle nuances of language, we can trace how languages evolved and diverged over time, mirroring the movements and interactions of the people who spoke them. It's like each discipline, genetics, archaeology, linguistics, they each hold a piece of the puzzle. And it's only when we combine those pieces that we start to see the full picture of the past. This research is just the beginning. Exactly. And what a beginning it is. It's challenging everything we thought we knew, opening up exciting new avenues of research, and fundamentally changing how we understand the history of Indo-European languages. But with all these new discoveries, we also have to remember... Remember what? Don't leave me hanging. Remember that our understanding of the past is always evolving. Every answer leads to new questions, pushing us to dig deeper, explore further, and refine our understanding. And that, my friend, is the beauty of scientific inquiry. Okay, I'm with you on that. Speaking of questions... This whole deep dive has me wondering if the CLV people were the ancestors of both the Indo-European and Anatolian language speakers who were their ancestors. Where did they come from? For that, my friend, is the million dollar question. <laughs> and it's one that researchers are actively trying to answer. Just imagine the possibilities. What other secrets might be hidden in the DNA just waiting to be unlocked? It's like we're peeling back layers of history, each layer revealing a new and more complex story. It's enough to make your head spin, but in the best way possible, of course. So where do we go from here? What does it all mean? So where do we go from here? What does it all mean? We've unearthed this incredible story about the CLV people, those genetic lines, the Yamnaya expansion. It's almost like rewriting history in real time. It really is. And I think one of the biggest takeaways here is how interconnected everything is. We tend to think of ancient cultures as isolated, but this research shows just how much interaction and exchange was going on. It's like a web of connections stretching across time and space. Totally. It's not just about pushing back the timeline. It's about changing our whole perspective and set separate groups with clear boundaries. It's more like this constant flow of genes, cultures, and languages all mixing and merging to create something new. Mm -hmm. It makes you realize how much we've underestimated the dynamism of the past. Right. We're not just talking about isolated migrations, but about generations of interaction shaping the course of history in ways we never imagined. And it's a reminder that this process of cultural and linguistic exchange is still happening today all around us. It's like this ancient echo that's still reverberating through time. We're all part of this ongoing story shaped by the movements and interactions of those who came before us. But I got to ask, with all this focus on genetics and archaeology, what about the languages themselves? What can they tell us that DNA and artifacts can't? Ah, uh, excellent question. Language is more than just a tool for communication. It's a window into the minds of the people who spoke it, reflecting their worldview, beliefs, and values. As we delve deeper into the origins of languages like Indo-European, we're not just reconstructing words and grammar, we're reconstructing entire ways of thinking. Okay, gives me shells. Yeah. So by studying these ancient languages, we're not just learning about the past. We're connecting with the very essence of what it means to be human. We're tapping into the thoughts palouse, maybe even the dreams of people who lived thousands of years ago. It's mind-blowing. It is. And who knows what insights we might gain as we continue to decipher the secrets hidden within these linguistic time capsules. Perhaps we'll discover echoes of ancient myths, glimpses of forgotten rituals, or even clues to the origins of human consciousness itself. The possibilities are truly endless. I'm speechless. This deep dive has been an absolute whirlwind. We've traveled back in time, met the CLV people, uncovered hidden connections, and even questioned what we thought we knew about those famous Yamnaya. And we've only just scratched the surface. This research opens up so many exciting new avenues for exploration. It's an invitation to keep digging, keep questioning, and keep unraveling the mysteries of our shared past. Well said. And on that note, we want to hear from you. What stood out to weigh you in this deep dive? What questions are swirling in your mind right now? Hit us up on social media and let's keep this conversation going. Absolutely. We're all on this journey of discovery together. And who knows what incredible breakthroughs await us just around the corner. That's the thrill of it all, isn't it? The past is full of surprises and there's always more to learn. From all of us here at The Deep Dive, thanks for joining us on this incredible journey. Keep those minds curious and we'll catch you in the next episode.